Hi, and welcome to Alpaca. I'm Dr. Jennifer O'Sullivan, and on behalf of the Alpaca team, we're so excited to have you on our journey with us to develop a, a digital tool to assess young children's letter knowledge and phonemic awareness. Uh, as you can see from the names on the bottom of the screen here, uh, Alpaca is an Enterprise Ireland funded collaborative project between Marino Institute of Education, where I work as a, um, a lecturer in literacy education, and Trinity College Dublin. The project itself is situated within Learnovate, which is a technology centre located within Trinity. So let's just have a quick look and reminder of what Alpaca aims to do. Well, it really aims to allow all teachers to first of all identify children's foundational literacy skills and inform the instruction required for those children to become successful readers. It also aims to regularly monitor the progress of children who are receiving instruction in phonemic awareness and letter knowledge and help to cultivate a more inclusive classroom environment by identifying the strengths and the needs of all the children within that classroom setting. Now, let's just take a quick look at the uh, foundational skills that Alpaca will be assessing. Um, well, the research literature would all highlight that there are two specific early literacy skills that support and are particularly predictive of the development of children's future decoding skills. They are letter knowledge and phonemic awareness. So the literacy skills that we'll be assessing um, in Alpaca are displayed on the screen here for you. We'll be looking at rhyming, uh, initial phoneme isolation, the ability to identify the final phoneme isolation in words, uh, phoneme blending, phoneme deletion. We'll also then be looking at letter name knowledge, letter sound knowledge, uh, word recognition and non-word recognition. Now that does seem like a lot of tasks, uh, but thankfully we'll be doing uh, presenting these to the children at three periods during the school year um, and we'll be doing it in a developmentally appropriate way. So you'll see here on our next screen, uh, the tasks that uh, the children will be asked to take part in uh, in the first round of testing in September, October. So there'll be five tasks that we'll be asking the children to complete at that early stage of the year. We'll be looking at uh, assessing their rhyming ability, uh, their ability to identify the first or the initial phoneme in uh, simple CVC words. We'll be asking them to blend phonemes We'll be asking them to delete not only phonemes, but some syllables and compound words as well. And then we'll be looking at examining their letter name knowledge. Now, as you can imagine, at the very start of the year, we will be very much looking at um, identifying a baseline of where the children are at when they begin their time at, at the informal schooling. Um, but that that knowledge will also be indicative of where the children are at and the additional support that they may need in those first few um, months of school until we get to that uh, January piece where we'll be um, assessing them at that second round. Um, so I will come back to you before that second round and we'll look at the sort of tasks that we'll be completing at that stage. Um, at any one point, the children won't be engaged in more than six tasks. So in round one, they'll be doing these five tasks. In round two, we'll be doing six tasks. And then in round three, we'll be back to doing five tasks. Some of those tasks will, tasks will be repeated across all three sessions. And some tasks you'll see will actually be dropped after maybe round one and won't be continued. So examples of that would be the likes of, of rhyming ability. Uh, we won't be continuing on into round two because there are more, um, more predictive um, tasks that we can set children and that we can assess at that point and um, so we'll be developmentally we'll be designing developmentally appropriate tasks and changing uh, in some instances those tasks as we go through all the different periods of, of testing with the children and um, in terms then of, of giving you an idea of what the actual uh, interface looks like for the children you can see a couple of examples here so what you'll see uh, hopefully are uh, very clear images um, 
I've tried to make them and the team have tried to make them as unambiguous as possible. So it's very obvious when the children look at the image, what that image is. Now to help them along, there's also an audio to accompany each image. So the, the word associated with each image will be spoken as the image appears for the children. So uh, that should reduce ambiguity uh, even further, but it should also then help children who may have English as an additional language or a second language to just really help them and prompt them with both the image and the audio for each of those, um, each time the picture is displayed. As you can see uh, in each of the tasks, we've tried to design or develop it so that there are very few distractions on screen and it's very clear what the children uh, have to be uh, zoned in on and the aspects that will be zoned in on. Um, you'll see in the image on the, the top right hand side, the phoneme blending task, each image will come up one at a time as well. So it will be very clear to the children what the image is and what the word is that it's associated with the image. There is a little motivational piece built into each screen as well. So you'll see at the bottom of each screen, there's a little alpaca there and he has a, or she has a number of bales of hay and the alpaca will eat a bale of hay for each item that's completed by the child. So it just gives the child an idea of, you know, how many tasks or items are left. Um, uh, and there's also motivational phrases as we go through um, each subtask where they're told, you know, we're nearly there, keep going, you're doing great. Uh, another little point to highlight here is the child won't be told whether they got the answer right or wrong. Uh, they'll just be told, well done, you're doing very well, and it will go on to the next task. One of the reasons for this is because some of these items are repeated from round one to round two. So we don't necessarily want them to know whether, you know, you got this right or you got this wrong. And also these are very young children. So you know, we don't want any kind of demotivational piece in there to say, no, you, you didn't get that right. So they will be very much unaware of whether they got the um, answer right or wrong. We've also built in a discontinuation piece. So, you know, if a child is working through a task that it's particular challenging, particularly challenging or difficult for them, um, if they get three in a row incorrect, it will just automatically continue to the next task. With again, well done, you've done really well, and now let's try our next task. So again, the child won't necessarily be aware that you know they haven't completed uh, this every every item within this task. But we just wanted to ensure that no child is really really struggling and finding this really really difficult and being asked to complete you know ten to twelve items on a task that, that's far too challenging for them. So that's built in there as well. So um, there's an idea of, of each of the tasks um, or some of the tasks, I should say, and what that interface will look like for the children. In terms of then when to assess, just again to give you a, a little refresher here. So we're looking for that sort of last week for in September, first week in October for that first assessment to take place. It should take no longer than sort of 10 to 15 minutes. Again, that will depend on the ability of the child and how easy or difficult they find the, the items within the test. Um, then we'd be looking at sort of mid to late January. Uh, and uh, that's going to take a little bit longer because, as I mentioned, we'll have six tasks for the children to complete at that point. And then the final round of testing will be mid to late uh, May. Uh, again, that will be about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we've tried to build in sort of a two week window in each of these time periods to give you that little bit of flexibility. So, you know, if the beginning of October works better for you um, and your the team around you and your school setting, that's absolutely fine. Uh, and I'll give you details at the end of this presentation so you'll know who to contact if, if you have any difficulties. Uh, and I'm sure um, you have a lot of our contact details already, but I will just reiterate that at the end. In terms of then the commitment that's required from you, uh, well, we've already been through one, one particular stage of this where we chatted to you, either myself or Joe, chatted to you before the summer. Uh, I can't believe that the summer is behind us already, where we had our information session. We had a couple of one-to-one -one chats with you. We had a couple of focus groups just to try and understand your context as much as we possibly could so we can support you as much as possible uh, during this year trial. Um, September, October will be very shortly. Now we'll be on to you with a link to uh, distribute parental consent. Um, 
we'll be introducing a professional development session. We'll be talking about how, how you'll go about implementing the assessment. Um, you know, how you're going to log the children in, what that's going to look like. We'll be sending you links for the assessment. So you get to, you know, play around with it a little bit yourself before uh, you or your school or whoever it is who's administering the assessment. Because we are aware, you know, there are going to be different contexts and different schools. Uh, some of you will want to withdraw maybe a group of children and it might be a set teacher or the Senko within your school um, who will administer the test. Some of you will be class teachers who'd like to do it within your own class. So we'll be giving you lots of different, uh, I suppose, um, scenario guidelines depending on your context and how you'd like to administer the test. Or, or I hate the word test, sorry, the word assessment. After you've administered the assessment, then there will be a follow up uh, feedback session. As you're very aware, this is a trial period and we would really love to get as much feedback from you as we possibly can in terms of, you know, did this administration period work well for you? What were the issues? Um, you know, so that when we can tweak, uh, you know, certain aspects of the assessment for the next round of, of, um, of testing. Um, and we'll also ensure that we have some sort of result, results interpretation uh, workshop for you as well, where uh, we'll talk you through the teacher dashboard, what the results look like, how to, um, how to interrogate those results a little bit as well. And that sort of pattern will continue uh, for each of the, um, the rounds of assessment. All of them will have a little PD session for you beforehand or your school or, you know, classroom teachers, whoever it is, anybody at all who is any interested is more than welcome to, to join us for those sessions. And then there will be a follow up session. It could be in the form of a short survey or it could be, you know, a little focus group of teachers that we might pull together to have a chat um, myself and my colleague in Trinity College Dublin, uh, Dr. Anne Devitt, we might have a chat to you about, you know, how it went for you on that particular round. Do we need to make modifications? We'll make modifications, have they worked? So we really want this to be tool, a tool that works for you in your classroom or in your school setting as much as possible so that you know you'll want to use this tool again and it will be something that other teachers will want to use. So you can take a look at that uh, little commitment from you over the course um, of the year. So finally, uh, just in terms of this little welcome on board, a uh, very short little um, little video, just to say a huge thank you to all of you and your schools who are participating. We absolutely couldn't uh, do this work without you and we're so thrilled to have you on board and so excited to get this tool that we've been working on for the last you know, seven or eight months to get it out there uh, to you, the teachers, the, the set team, and more importantly to the children. Uh, and let's see how, how they in, you know, dialogue and interact with the tool. If you have any questions at all, you'll see both my details and Joe's details at the bottom of the screen here. No matter how small your question or query or how relevant or irrelevant you feel it is, drop us a line and we'll be more than happy to get back to you and address any questions, queries and issues you might have. Uh, I'll speak to you all, I think, next week, uh, where we'll uh, do a short little PD session on phonemic awareness. If that's uh, of interest to anybody else within your school, please do invite them along and you'll, you'll get some information and links on that a little bit later. But just to say once more, a huge thank you and very much looking forward to engaging on this journey with you. Thank you all and talk to you soon.